Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Aurora stock by analyzing their financial ratios and dissecting their financial statements so we can determine if the stock is a buy or a sell. Aurora is a Canadian cannabis producer. It trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange and New York Stock Exchange. It has eight production facilities and operates in 25 countries. It produces 625,000 kilos of cannabis per year, mainly in Canada, but also in Denmark and Latin America. Aurora is the second largest cannabis company in the world behind Canopy Growth. After significant expansion in 2018, the company reduced expenses in the second half of 2019 when the Canadian cannabis market had low sales due to excessive inventory and uncompetitive pricing with the black market. Let's get started with the model. We're going to look at the ticker trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange. And this is a mid cap company, 2.1 billion Canadian market cap. They're trading at 12.75 a share and they have 161 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They have negative free cash flow each year because they have such high expenses and they're investing a lot of their money back into their business. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they have negative net income in most years. In 2018, it's positive. Revenue looks really good. It triples from 2017 to 2018, then goes up about five times in 2019, but then goes up very little in 2020. This is the income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales for the year. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses that are directly related to making the company's products. And you could see in 2020, the cost of revenue was higher than the revenue. In the other years, it was much lower. Let me show you why. The company passed through 105 million inventory impairment charge. Right here, it mentions the inventory impairment charges were due to a decrease in selling price and excess inventory identified based on current and projected market demands. Gross profit would have decreased $40.9 million. So they say gross profit would have been 110 million, not negative 33 million. So an inventory impairment like this is more of a one-time charge. In the future, you would expect their gross profit to be positive, not negative. In 2020, they had negative $486 million of operating income. Every year they have negative operating income, but they had a huge loss, $3.3 billion. The company passed through a 2.5 billion impairment on intangible assets and goodwill. So this is not a cash loss of $3.3 billion because the $2.5 billion impairment is a non-cash item. Goodwill occurs when you acquire a company for more than it's worth, but then you write down the value in the future. So although it's not a good sign that they're writing down the value of their assets, it's a non-cash item that's not affecting their day-to-day -day operations. In June 2020, the company reported 279 million Canadian dollars of sales. 121 million was from medical cannabis, 126 million was from consumer. They did have 12 and a half million from wholesale cannabis, so that's a pretty small portion of their business. They did have some ancillary income, which is income from investments. Let's look at the capital structure. They have 531 million dollars of debt, 2.2 billion dollars of equity. And I usually calculate the weighted average cost of capital based off of the cost of the debt and cost of the equity. But I spent hours looking through their financials and I couldn't figure out their cost of debt. I just googled WAC Aurora Cannabis and I got this 13.67%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's 2.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 1.3 billion Canadian dollars. We divide that by 161 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price at $8.31. They're trading at $12.75, so they're trading at a 53% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street values them at. 
Simply Wall Street is double my valuation. They're at 1706, so they're saying the stock is a buy. It's undervalued. So it's impossible to value a company with negative free cash flow each year because the valuation comes out negative and you can't have a negative stock price. So I had to look at other analyst estimates. I also looked at the free cash flow growth of the competitors in this market. And I also looked into other factors as well to try to come up with a valuation. So it was really tricky but I did come up with a pretty low valuation. So it's really hard to value these types of companies, but I think the more videos I do of companies with negative free cash flow, the better I'll get at valuing them. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. So it looks like the stock price was over $150, but it never was. The reason it's so high is because they did a one for 12 reverse stock split. It is currently trading at 1275, but if you want to know their actual stock price in 2018, 2019, you have to divide all these numbers by 12. I pulled this little section from their annual report. One of the rules to be active on the New York Stock Exchange is your stock price has to be above $1 for 30 consecutive trading days. This stock was going to get delisted if they didn't do the reverse stock split. A regular stock split or reverse stock split do not affect anything, it just affects the number of shares. So to give you an example, if before the reverse stock split, you held 12 shares and they were worth $1 each, after the reverse stock split, you would have held one share that was worth $12, so your valuation was the same. A reverse stock split is a signal of a company distress. You don't want to be delisted from the New York Stock Exchange because less people would be aware of your company. It doesn't change the operations of your company at all, but it's like marketing. The more people that know about your company, the more people that will buy your stock and it will drive the price higher. There's much less liquidity on the pink sheets or over the counter. You always want to be trading on the major exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. If you invested $10,000 when this company IPO'd, you'd have $13,500 today, a 36% return. This company acquired Reliva in May 2020. This is a US company. This gives Aurora access into the US market. This is a great acquisition for the company and its investors. On April 2020, the company filed an at-the-market supplement, which gives the company the ability to sell $250 million more in common stock. This increases their ATM financing to $650 million. The nice thing about ATM is you can sell shares whenever you want. If the company needs money for any reason to pay down debt, acquire businesses, or to run its operations, they could just sell more shares into the market at any point in time. But when they do sell the shares into the market, it will dilute the current shareholders. But you have to think of it in a cost-benefit analysis. Would you want to be diluted 10% if your stock goes up 50% by acquiring another business? When Aurora acquired Reliever, they appointed the CEO of Reliever, Miguel Martin, to its chief commercial officer position. Then in September, they appointed Miguel to the CEO position. In September of this year, the UFC and Aurora mutually terminated their partnership. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average P.E. in the market is 16.8, the median is 15.1, P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. Since they have negative net income, they have negative P.E., so we can't look at that ratio. The average price of sales is 4.7, the median is 2.0, price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 7.3, so they're doing worse than the median and average. The average price to book is 4.6, the median is 2.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 1.0, so they're doing much better than the average and median. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet. The average interest coverage ratio is 12.6, the median is 3.9. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're negative since they have negative EBIT. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes or operating income on the income statement. The average ROE is 12%, the median is 12%. ROE is net income over equity. They're negative since they have negative net income. Average current ratio is 1.8, the median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 1.5, so they're doing well in this category. Current assets are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. Examples are cash, accounts receivables, and inventory. Current liabilities are debts and payables due within 12 months. Examples are current debt and accounts payable. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Pacera, Supernus, and Teva, all in the same industry as Aurora. And if Aurora has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE and price of sales. 
They are doing really well in price to book. They're doing fine in current ratio, negative ROE. They have the lowest debt of all the companies, but they're a small company. When you convert them to US dollars, they're 1.5 billion market cap. And nobody pays a dividend in this industry. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 53% premium, but that doesn't mean the stock price won't go up. The market is forward thinking, so if investors feel the stock price is gonna go up in the future, they'll keep buying it and drive the price higher and higher. Especially now with Biden becoming president, investors feel cannabis stocks are gonna go way higher. Their ratios and financials look really bad. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. If you'd like to do a private Zoom session with me, receive a custom valuation, or just support the channel, become a member. Click on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.